Carlo Ancelotti distinctly unhappy though, particularly with the red card, saying Koulibaly was subjected to monkey noises throughout the game. We asked three times for play to be suspended. They had announcements with the speaker three times, but the match continued. We keep being told play can be halted, but when? After four or five announcements, maybe we have to take matters into our own hands next time and stop play ourselves. They'll probably make us lose the game if we walk off, but we're prepared to do it. It's not good for Italian football seeing this. Uh, Let's bring in Gab Marcotti to the show. Gab, your reaction to uh, what Carlo Ancelotti said following the game, first of all? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he came out and, uh, and he, he, he took a strong stance on this. And, uh, you know, you can say that, well, they lost the game, it's easy afterwards, but I think it's important that people speak up. Now, they have a, they have a protocol to this, just to be clear, uh, and this is what he's referring to, is uh, if you believe one of your players... Uh, or if the stewards pick up that somebody's being subjected uh, to monkey noises or racist abuse, uh, they have the, the FA has people there who are supposed to initially they're supposed to make an announcement asking the fans to stop, and then if it happens again, uh, they have the power to uh, to to stop the game. I think in this occasion, uh, it happened. Uh, the Napoli's compa complaints happened three different times during the game, but evidently the the referee or the fourth or fourth official felt that. Uh, there was enough time between the two incidents that it wasn't obvious or, or whatever it was, it, it clearly, uh, clearly would have been a lot more effective if they had simply um, suspended the game for X amount of time until it ends. Uh, I think that would have sent a much clearer message. Um, to be clear also on the, on the Koulibaly incident, Ancelotti wasn't justifying, uh, you know, wasn't using it as an explanation for Koulibaly, saying that he was obviously wound up because he had been racially abused during the game, he's not saying that, you know, well, that makes it okay for him to be applauding sarcastically. Uh, and Koulibaly himself taking to Twitter, uh, saying he's obviously proud of the color of his skin and he's not going to put up with it anymore. So uh, a, a strong stance, uh, uh, certainly, certainly there from a player who arguably the man of the match until that point. Gab, what did you make of uh, Koulibaly and the clapping? Did you think it was directed at the crowd or at the referee, in, in your view, the way you saw it? I mean, I was only watching on television, so um, when I saw him clapping, I thought, uh-oh, the referee, you know, any referee will send you off uh, when he sees that. Um, maybe you would have had a different vantage point uh, in the ground, uh, but from the camera angle, it looked like he was clapping up the pitch at the referee, but... To be honest, uh, you'd need to ask somebody who was there. What, what I do think, though, and again, with hindsight, Koulibaly is one of the most disciplined and professional players out there. He very, very rarely loses his cool. Very rarely, in fact, I don't remember any incident where he's picked up a card uh, for dissent or for, for doing something so, something so stupid as to go and, and, and applaud a referee sarcastically. So it was way, way out of character. So... Again, I, I would tend to give them the benefit of the doubt that, that, that the general applause was either directed at, at, at the fans or, or maybe just the frustration that uh, the game hadn't been stopped. I think that, just briefly, because I know we want to move on, I think that's probably more to the point there, Gab, is that, is that there's a frustration there at, at the free kick being given, but there's also, it would seem to me, a frustration in the clap at the official if Napoli had indeed asked for the game to be stopped mm. on at least two or three occasions. Uh, right. and it hadn't been stopped. Uh, it's totally understandable that a player uh, is potentially going to react uh, in that way. What the hell is wrong with these people? Uh, if, it, if, it does, if it has happened, we've seen a banana been thrown on the field, uh, I believe at an Arsenal-Tottenham game. We've seen the alleged racism at the Chelsea game to Raheem Sterling, and now potential more incidents here. I mean, my God, what is society coming to. And the origin of this incident, just to tie a bow on it, Steve, was it even a foul? Did Koulibaly foul Politano? Um, again, it's open to interpretation. Personally, I don't think I would have given a free kick. The problem the referee has is that once he gives the free kick, because Koulibaly's basically behind his opponent, then it's a yellow card. Mm. Uh, so the fact that the referee's given the free kick, he has to give him a yellow. Yeah. Did the you one, think it was a free well, kick? It's, it's no, I, I, just I wouldn't have given it. No, I don't think there's an... I think he puts his hand out. I mean, do we want to... I mean, do we want to put a, a law... Write a law into the, to, to the to the book that says players have to run with their arms down and you can't have any contact? <laughs> if we want to do that, then, then fine. 
it, it was a free kick. But if mm. we're still living in a world of contact sport, then I don't think it was. What I would say, and amongst all this nonsense, is that every time I see Cooley Bali play, uh, he rarely has a bad game. He has one of the best defenders in world football. Mm. He's got it all. Yep, he's yep. pacey, he's quick, he's strong, and he's decisive.